Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melvin Way. I have many plant growing series. This is the first episode of a new one about growing an ice cream bean cutting. It's day zero. Inga edulis is the scientific name. It's known as the ice cream bean. It's native to South and Central America, mostly mentioned in Amazonia. So it's said to be a fast grower according to the nursery owner I bought this from or one of the employees and it's got all these compound leaves. Uh, some of the leaf tips are burned. This was growing in a greenhouse that was covered by a white cloth tarp, I believe, and hence it was growing in full shade the entire time. So this is basically to give you a preview of what it looks like right out of the nursery before anything's happened to it. And I'll go into the details of how I think uh, you should transplant and care for this right away because the nursery owner did say that you have to get this into a five gallon pot right away so um, obviously you're not buying a five gallon pot because uh, it's a lot more expensive and uh, you might not want to grow your uh, plants in the same growing mediums that they had them in for these little seed pots so this is day two and you can see there's not much change. It does seem like the leaf burning at the tips is getting a little bit more severe. So I'll be doing a lot of talking about the troubleshooting and uh, examination of root health and things like that. I will do a transplant pretty soon per his advice. So that's basically what this plant looks like in the beginning. All right, so now I'm going to go over all the prep work I did for this upcoming transplant. Here you can see me preheating the oven to 250 Fahrenheit. That's 121 Celsius, well above boiling point. And I'm doing this just to be on the safe side to sterilize my cocoa choir, which I'll show you in a minute. So this is a medium that shouldn't contain bugs or pests according to the manufacturer, but there is a tiny uh, minority of Amazon reviewers that said they grew this uh, used this to grow plants and had bugs. So um, you can never be too safe. This is my first time using Cocoa Choir. Some of my users suggested this a decade ago and I never listened back then, but I'm uh, always considering new ideas. And since uh, the whole sand and uh, clay soil, filtered clay soil mixture hasn't been working out that well in those uh, double stack Rubbermaid uh, trash cans with drilled holes, um, I've decided to go with this because I don't want to drag around hundreds of pounds of sand and clay anymore. So just for the convenience factor, I'm going to go with this. So there's a brick and you add 25 liters, 6.6 .6 gallons of water, and you should get 55 liters or almost 15 gallons of uh, puffed up hydrated cocoa choir. So this is what it looks like shrink wrapped and you can see there's already some holes in it. So it's very dry and if this package were to get uh, water seeping in, then it would bust open kind of like those uh, mattresses that uh, inflate out of the box upon exposure to air. So I've seen a lot of videos of this and I've done some research online and basically this thing expands like crazy when it comes into contact with water. So I'm going to bake my brick. So that weighs five kilos or 11 pounds. It's not too heavy and it basically turns into this huge volume afterwards. So after two hours of baking, the brick cracked, but it didn't burn or give off any smells. So there were no smells before and there are no smells uh, during or after. So this bake surely killed any parasites that may have been present. And um, I think this should allay any fears about, uh, you know, spider mite eggs or other unknown exotic pests. Um, you know, infesting my plants after I do this transplant because uh, these are made from coconut fibers from India, I believe. So here's uh, my new setup, uh, five gallon plastic pots with these matching saucers on the bottom. So this is uh, another purchase off of Amazon and I'm switching to this um, setup plus uh, cocoa choir just for the convenience factor. As I said, I don't want to deal with hundreds of pounds of sand and clay soil anymore. I want a very well aerated uh, growing medium 
and pot set up. So you could see there's all these uh, holes and slits at the bottom. They're not obnoxiously big, but they're big enough to get plenty of air circulation coming in through the bottom, which is really important. So they're not perfect. As you can see here, this one has some defects, but they're more aesthetic than most of the other stuff I saw on Amazon. So I just decided to go with this. And of course, I'm not happy with that defect right there, but I'm in a hurry. I don't want to deal with returns and waiting for another set and blah, 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 just if it's just one pot. So I'm going to check out the other four and I don't think it's worth it to deal with returns um, for something that I need right now. And it's going to just get beat up and scratched up outside anyway. So I think this is a... Uh, you know, it's going pretty well so far, so we'll see in a few minutes of this video um, how the transplant goes and what the aftermath of uh, using this in the Cocoa Choir is. So the pot is flexible. It's not a super thick plastic, but considering how lightweight this material is going to be and how fluffy it is, um, it's not a big deal to not have uh, basically a plastic fortress because I'm not using 50 pounds of sand and soil. So here's the obligatory Coco Choir expanding footage that everyone shows online. So I watched a few of these videos before I uh, delved into this and made the purchases and right off the bat I realized I used the wrong container shape. I should have gotten one of those big rectangular um, totes that's more wide in both dimensions than it is um, tall. So I picked the, not the worst possible container, but a pretty bad one because it all eventually ended up getting stuck on the bottom. So the claim is that this can make uh, 15 gallons or slightly under worth of a cocoa choir once fully hydrated and that you need basically 6.6 .6 gallons or is it 55 liters uh, so um, actually I'm not even sure if that math works out um, yeah I think they got the math wrong but anyway um, yeah you add in your water I use hot tap water I don't even think the temperature matters there are no smells uh, I hope the baking didn't um, you know won't accelerate the rotting process because I'm I'm really looking for a growth medium that's uh, very um, soft yet supportive because it has a springiness to it and very um, filled with air space so it'll be very aerated because the the main thing your plant roots need any root system needs is actually uh, plenty of oxygen and circulation of gases and uh, the reason I didn't want to use rotting organic material in the past is because uh, I don't want something that's just going to rot away and deprive the soil or the potting mix of its oxygen and basically suffocate the plant rot, uh, plant roots and cause them to rot. So this stuff is uh, very moist and uh, uh, pliable and it's a, uh, you can feel how soft and fluffy it is. So basically I, I think it'll be a great medium. And I can't wait to see my plants growing in this, and it's just way easier than the setup I had going for the last few years. So I'm definitely open to trying this new method out and um, seeing where it gets me. But um, yeah, I chose the wrong container, and you can see I'm paying the price here already because in the end I spent so much time just sitting there outside at night um, uh, picking with my hands to try to get it out of the bottom because it was kind of like... Uh, compacted in there despite all the watering so as you can see it's only one day later after the previous clip on day two and the leaves appear to be very badly burned and the reason for that is photo bleaching because when plants are acclimatized to growing in full shade or partial shade there are chlorophyll discs that compensate by becoming very big to capture any light that's available and hence when you move it into full sun like I did after taking it back from the nursery even though I watered it immediately burns like that so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, transplant these uh, plants that I bought from the nursery the roots here do occupy most of this uh, so-called soil mass it's not real soil it's a kind of potting mix uh, that's the cheapest um, medium that a nursery can prepare mass amounts of plants in 
So it's understandable why they all do it and they use the cheapest plastic containers as well. But you're recommended by even the nursery workers to transplant these into five gallon pots, which I'm doing. And uh, these pots have great aeration. I'm hoping for the best here. But I don't feel the need to shake off uh, all of this potting mix per se. I don't want to cause more damage than I've already caused by excavating the roots and squeezing the container on the root ball. Well, it's not really a full root ball, which I was hoping for, but um, this is definitely not going to be as healthy as the Kadota fig um, tree cutting, which uh, I already made uh, a series from and published three weeks before this. So the progress has been slower for this and the mango, and um, I'm waiting for them to recover and have some good uh, new foliage growth before I post an update, which is what I've done with this video. So you can see this cocoa choir is very fluffy, and um, you can compress it if you want, but there's always that risk of causing additional damage if you really pack it in hard. And uh, it goes further, and I think it works to your benefit if you let it be very aerated by having it be as fluffy as possible. It provides excellent structural support because it's so fluffy and bouncy. So it's basically acting like a, a spring in all directions and it keeps the plant upright, which is all you really need. So it's day five, I'm spraying some of that bare advanced, um, you know, it's anti-parasitical, it's anti-fungal, it's, uh, you know, deal with molds, uh, insects, uh, mites, uh, which are not insects, um, all sorts of parasitical problems. So now I'm feeding in some miracle Grow into this uh, showering can that has a max capacity of two gallons. If you follow my channel before, you've seen this can many times. I've had different cans in the past too. And here's some crushed vitamin powder. It's not that plants need vitamins like we do. It's just uh, they basically synthesize all that on their own, but they just need things like calcium and other micronutrients which I'm providing in a calcium carbonate rich uh, vitamin pill like that. And um, it gets, you know, potassium, phosphorus, uh, uh, nitrogen in abundant quantities from the blue crystals of the miracle Grow all-purpose plant food that I just put in. So you use a large scoop if you need to grow your plants outdoors, uh, the small end of the scoop if you're growing them indoors according to the instructions and fill it up, um, dissolve it in one and a half gallons. So one gallon is uh, it's about 3.78 liters, I believe, if you follow the metric system. So uh, yeah, I'll fill that, make it a little bit more dilute than they recommend, which is fine. Um, and I'll apply it here to all of my plants. I'm just applying part of that um, two gallons of dissolved fertilizer and crushed um, vitamin pill into this pot. So it absorbs very, very readily. And here you can see me just uh, using the garden hose with tap water and spraying off uh, excess fertilizer that might be on the leaves of any of these plants, which is uh, a practice I like to do. I don't like to have concentrated solutes sitting on the leaves and potentially causing burns. Although fertilizer can be absorbed through the undersides of leaves for uh, plants if needed, there's uh, foliar fertilizers as well. So, um, yeah, this is all new to me in terms of these uh, five gardening pots. And I think it might be a good idea to fill a little bit of uh, tap water into the, the collection tray so the water can absorb up instead of just watering from the top down and having the nutrients run through the cocoa choir and just sitting in the bottom concentrating. So it's day 14. And you can see that these other stems don't look too hopeful. They're all yellowing. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're gone in my experience. It just means that they're in a state of shock from recent trauma and need to recover. So the source of the shock is just moving these from a nursery uh, that had full shade essentially and very high heat to an open environment with full sun. So this new compound leaf grew big. One of the leaflets shriveled for whatever reason, maybe it's disease or uh, parasitism or something, or just some kind of birth defect. And the rest of the leaflets have burned up. There's no turgor pressure, meaning there's no water pressure in there, which uh, basically suggests that the leaves have grown too big, too fast, and 
the root system isn't well developed enough to supply water and hence turgor pressure into all the leaves. So it's day 22. You can see there's a, a little bit of development. The coloration has gotten better, although this is uh, footage from a cloudy day. But you can see definitely those stems that I talked about, they were all yellow in the last clip. They're sort of greenish yellow now, turning more of a red. Um, so there's hope, and there's a new uh, set of compound leaflets uh, developing um, in the middle there, and they're all sort of uh, a reddish, uh, kind of reminds me of mango leaves. You know, they start at a, a reddish or purplish, and then they become yellow. But in this case, I don't think they transition to yellow. You basically go from that to sort of green right away. I think if you were to grow these indoors, you'd probably get the same effect that I did have growing my mango uh, seedlings indoors or uh, on balconies with partial partial sun because um, they develop slower. So there's like a beautiful yellow phase as well. So I'm giving the same kind of fertilization every two weeks from now on, which is basically the miracle a grow per all-purpose plant food dissolved in uh, about two gallons for a big scoop plus uh, one or two crushed vitamins uh, that part is completely arbitrary so you can see me showering off my Joshua tree here that's really tough I can spray it with a however hard of a stream of water that I want and these other plants I have to be a little bit more gentle and I'll squeeze the handle so hard because I would just blow the leaves right off so you can see these are my plants and Many of them are in a state of recovery, and I gave up using the uh, homemade, dual rubber made uh, waste basket, uh, homemade pots that I had with drilled holes at the bottom for drainage. So nothing's ever sitting in water at the bottom, it always drains out. But I think the, the aeration on the bottom, the size of the holes was just too small for those pots before. So even though they were in almost all sand, with a little bit of clay soil mixed in, I think they just weren't getting enough root system aeration. The root systems were underdeveloped and I didn't have full sun. So I'm moving to an environment with full sun now and I'm giving the roots full aeration. I'm hoping the results will speak for themselves pretty soon. So this is another once every two weeks application of this bare bio-advanced uh, insecticide, miticide, a fungicide takes care of all my potential problems in one before they become big problems um, until the plant can at least be very healthy and self-sufficient in my opinion. So this is day 27. You can see the coloration is uh, maybe about the same. It's a little bit better but you can see new compound leaflet primordia developing. Um, this first set of compound leaves that made it and acclimatized to a new environment and became green. That's kind of uh, um, it's not that aesthetic. It's all kind of like wavy and I, I think the the problem is probably just uh, the root system was undeveloped. So you can see there are some bite marks too on the, the right of the screen there uh, from some insect. Uh, it could be snails. They often predate on my plants and uh, it could be some flying insect like a locust or a katydid or something like that. So it's day 34. And you can see there's compound leaves developing all over. Uh, there's a little bit of webbing there, and it's just a single strand. I don't see any spiders, so it might be mites. So uh, it's a good thing I'm spraying uh, that bare advanced miticide uh, combo because uh, there's potentially just a lot of parasites that can be coming uh, with your nursery plants. And it, it probably doesn't matter whether you buy it from some exotic grower or... Uh, um, your local big box store like Home Depot or Lowe's because uh, that's just too many plants. The chances of having a, some kind of parasite or problem or fungus is, is pretty great in my opinion. So um, here I'm just showing the crushing process for these multivitamins. I eat these all the time and I'm just using that to supplement what's missing in this miracle Grow all-purpose plant food. It has almost all the the macronutrients and most of the micronutrients that plants need but not everything so uh, based on my very simple analysis of the chemical elements and compounds that are needed um, I think this vitamin pill uh, supplementation should basically cover everything you can always add other things later if I notice there are problems but 
So far, my opinion is that the, the fertilization seems to be working well, at least for uh, yeah, the Kadota fig. Uh, that one had a healthy root ball, so it's developing like crazy. And these other plants are sort of, they didn't start with as good of a, a root situation, so they need some time to recover. The root system of a plant is the most important thing, and that's what sort of the plant actually is, its base, basically. And if it doesn't have a healthy root system, then I've shown in the past in many plant growing series that basically the, the shoot system will get overdeveloped and then the plant will sort of wilt over and then go nowhere because it doesn't have a good uh, base of support. So the shoot system should never exceed the root system in growth. But unfortunately, I had a lot of cases where I learned the hard way, um, you know, doing the opposite. Well, not intentionally, but... Um, you can see there's uh, more development here in all of my plants. So I would say the the new Coco Choir system is working really well. The fertilization is just something I've always been doing. But uh, let's not you know, underscore the amount of credit that should go to the, the Bayer BioAdvance too because I think that uh, might be doing a lot that we just can't see here because typically when you start off with seedlings or you buy a cutting, or something and then you start growing it on your own it encounters problems pretty soon and aside from things like the leaf burn due to moving into full sun you just have a lot of fungal infections typically and other problems as well uh, spider mites that take a while so it's day 42 you can see there's uh, the compound leaves are starting to grow on the bottom it's not just uh, leaf primordia bluff uh, a little bit of a, a little leaflet fell off there that I touched in the beginning. That was probably just from me touching some of these uh, compound leaf primordia that didn't seem to be doing anything for a few weeks. So now you can see that the coloration is getting a lot healthier. Um, these two compound leaflets in the middle are just sort of, they stop growing. It's sort of a weird development, but you can see another one that's developing right there in the center of the screen. So that looks really healthy and it looks like there's more on the way just all over the plant. Every single stem, no matter how thin, has had a return to coloration and is sprouting something right now, almost every single one. So this new compound leaflet on the top is a good example of what they look like. I bet it's going to be much bigger. And you can see another compound leaf on the top that's got a very um, you know, high amount of turgor pressure. That's got six leaflets to it, so we might see a little bit of change in the morphology. And uh, overall, I would say this is really healthy, so stay tuned for further updates.